All right, here we go. So praise God, hallelujah, uh, this uh, good December 4th cold Sunday morning, but it's the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm, I'm dressed in my comfy sweater today because I just kind of want this to be uh, just a relaxing, more of uh, less less for YouTube and more for you guys, just an encouraging word for you to bless you in this time. And that's the, what the Lord told me to do today was uh, not starting a new series, uh, not having some kind of big production, just a simple uh, anointed encouraging word because we need that in this day and time. You know, we, of course, recently have all been going through the COVID lines. And yesterday, Kim and I were waiting out in the cold for three hours uh, to get a COVID test. And uh, people have been quarantined and shut down and locked up. And it's been a uh, time of just trying changes every day happening, stuff going on. There's protests and stuff going on all over the place. And, and so it would be an easy decision to choose to decide to be bitter, to be angry, to be resentment, to have resentment, to have despair, and uh, the Lord get put upon my heart that you basically have two choices. You can continue. You can say, okay, Lord, I'm just going to put you to the side for now. And once things get better and once things get warmer and once uh, once things get freer, then I'll come back and worship you. And it, it would be easy in our hearts and in our minds to have that kind of attitude. And we can continue down the road of bitterness and anger and resentment and frustration and being, you know, feel like we're, you know, the, the, the World Cup's going on. We might feel like we are that football, we are that soccer ball being kicked around all over the place. Or we can take the second choice, which is to return to a spirit of joy, of thanksgiving, of peace, and of hope. Because those are the choices that are set before us. You know, the Bible says that Jesus is the hope of glory on the inside of us. Now, we can choose to tap into that, or we can choose to just kind of set that to the side and, and have our, our, uh, our cup of, 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 of despair, our cup of anger, our cup of resentment, our cup of frustration, or we can participate in the overflowing cup that Psalms 23 says that your cup over flow. So what will be your choice today? And last night, I had to have a moment, and I said this earlier, where I said, you know what, I'm going to choose today to declare the word of God. I'm going to choose today to have some prayer time. And Kim and I, we got home, and we got done with our work, and had some prayer time together, in which we just encouraged each other, and got in the word of God, and prayed. And I'm feeling much better today. I'm feeling hopeful today. I'm feeling strengthened today. So I hope to take what I received and bless you with it today. Amen. So the Bible tells us in James 4, 8, this is the ESV, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. In trying times and difficult times, it may feel like God is a million miles away, back turned, going the other direction. And sometimes even, you know, even I can feel like, God, where are you? What are you doing? What's going on? I don't understand. I don't, I'm confused. And all of those feelings are from the devil. That's from the enemy trying to whisper to you, to lie to you, to discourage you, and to tell you, look, God's not here for you. God is not, you know, God's not anywhere around this situation. He's deserted you. And it's easy to think that and to believe that. But the Bible says very clearly that if you will make the choice to draw near to God, then he will draw near to you. There's an action on your part, which results in a corresponding action on God's part. If you want to see God close to you, then draw near to God and he will show up in a powerful way. If you decide today not to follow the lies of the enemy, but to come near to God, God will say, okay, he's coming near to me. My daughter's coming near to me. My son's coming near to me. Then I will come near to him. Amen. We need to have an attitude and a heart and a mindset where we're coming near to God. The Bible tells us Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20, again, ESV. 
And uh, the Bible says here, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. And that, that's kind of what I'm doing for us today. I call heaven and earth to witness for us today that I've set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. So the Bible tells us that we can today choose blessing. We can choose life. He is our length of days. He gives you longevity to get through trying times. He gives you uh, resistance and resilience to get through dark seasons. He gives you strength that you need to get through the, the, the trying and the tough times that we're in. Amen. So today, if you will draw near to God, if you will choose life, then life will be the fruit of your choice. If you choose despair, despair will be the fruit of your choice. If you choose bitterness, bitterness will be the fruit of your choice. If you want to see good situations, if you want to see things turn around, then you must decide today to choose life. And I've done that, so I will encourage you today to choose the blessing of the Lord in order to have that longevity, in order to be in the land that the Lord your God has given you. And God has not given up on this land. Amen. Continuing our encouragement today, the Bible says the Lord executes righteousness and justice to all who are oppressed. Psalms 103 verse 6. You know, the Bible tells us, you, you, you can look earlier in there, it says the blessings of the Lord. Remember the blessings of the Lord. He forgives all of your sins. He heals all your diseases. He redeems life from destruction. He satisfies your life with good things so that your youth is renewed as the eagle has this line in here. And because most of us before have never been uh, oppressed most of the, and not in a major way anyways, we sometimes we forget this one, but I, I saw that today and it jumped off the page at me and it says, the Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are oppressed. So today, I want to give you an encouragement that the Lord has justice. He is a God who loves justice, who loves mercy, whose mercy is new every morning. And great is his faithfulness. The Bible says in Psalms 103, 17, if you go down a little bit further from there, it says, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting. Today, God has mercy for you. I want you to personalize that God has mercy and justice for Sean. God has mercy and justice for Eric. God has mercy and justice for Irina. God is a God that loves to give and execute justice. Amen. He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten me. He has not forgotten us. He is a God of righteousness and justice and of mercy. And we have an expectation as children of God to see those things come to pass in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. Continuing on on that trend, it says, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. Psalm 146, verse 7. Again, here we're seeing a theme of God is a God of justice. God is a God of mercy. And he has called you and I to, first of all, receive that so that then we can give that justice. We can give that mercy to others. And sometimes that is not easy to do. And sometimes it is quite difficult to do. But if we want to see that fruit in our lives, we must choose today. I'm going to walk in mercy. I'm going to walk in righteousness. I'm going to walk in justice. I'm going to treat others justly. And I believe I will receive fruit and harvest in my life of righteousness and justice. The Bible says he gives food to all that are hungry. You know, this week, I went to several different stores looking for a loaf of bread. 
I mean, I never thought I would be in a situation where I was going from store to store looking for some bread, but the Lord is good. He delivered. I've got three loaves now. Praise God. I'm not in want, but the Lord gives food to the hungry. We used to use this 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 verse and say, well, the hungry is hungry for the Lord or, or hungry in your spirit or hungry in your soul, but the Lord gives food to the hungry. So I hope that today that all of our needs are being met, that we're not in lack. The Bible says that the lions go hungry, but those that trust in the Lord will never go hungry, that those that trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Amen. I love the Psalms. The Psalms just have so much encouragement in them. So I encourage you to get a hold of your Psalms and just read through uh, the blessings of the Lord that are in those today. So the Lord, again here, executes justice for the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. He sets free the prisoners. Amen. We just believe we receive that in Jesus' name name. I'm going to continue on. And we're just today, I just got a lot of scriptures for you today. A lot of the word of God, because the word changes things. The word will set you free. The Lord, the word is, is powerful. It's like a two-edged sword and you can, it can also uh, be like a scalpel for the inside of you, but it's also your weapon to combat the enemy with. Amen. Let's take a look here at some other scriptures. Corinthians or second Corinthians 317. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. We're going to continue on this, this topic now of freedom. John 836. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Psalm 102, 19 through 21, that he looked down from his holy height from heaven. The Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who were doomed to die, that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord in Jerusalem in uh, his praise. Amen. Today, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is free. Not there was, not there will be. No, that is a promise for you and for me today. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And you can just be released right now in the name of Jesus from despair. You can be released right now from discouragement. You can be released right now from worry. You can be released right now from heaviness and, 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 and weariness that weighs you down. Because the Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, and all of us have been anointed with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So all of us have the spirit of Jesus. All of us have the Holy Spirit. All of us have the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon our lives. So we need to act like the children of God and get our minds right and get our words right and readjust our attitude and receive today that where the spirit of God is living on the inside of me, living on the inside of you, that there is freedom. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that God listens to those that are upon the earth, that he listens to the groans of the prisoners. He listens to those that, that are feeling discouraged. He listens to those that feel despair. He listens to those that are feel uh, treated unjustly. He listens to those that feel like they're uh, being kicked around like a soccer ball, like I said, and he hears your cries and he wants to free the prisoner today. Well, freedom starts on the inside out. Amen. So today I declare freedom in the name of Jesus for your mind, for your heart, in your spirit, in your soul, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, that that freedom that we have on the inside would start to manifest in the surrounding situations around us, that these regulations would be uh, canceled in the name of Jesus, that we'll be able to celebrate Christmas together as a family, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, that quickly, quickly freedom is coming to this land in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to have a prayer later for China, but uh, that's just a little, little preview right now. But freedom first starts in me and in you. Amen. We're going to continue on here. Uh, with this this idea of freedom, as I said, freedom manifests 
in you where the spirit of God is. Freedom can manifest in you. It's not has been, it's not will be. It is now for every situation. There is freedom. Amen. We're going to look at Luke 4, 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of, excuse me, of recite to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Amen. You know, we, we, we're trying to keep that perspective, as I said earlier, about the, the kids in Cambodia. So there's always a worse situation, but the Lord cares about every situation. And I want to share with you the words of Jesus here, because this is Jesus speaking here. He says, the Spirit of God is upon me, and he has anointed me to proclaim good news to you. And that's what I want to do for us today, Eric there is good news for you. Irina, there is good news for you. Nick, there is good news for you. There is good news for this church. The, the, the better days are still out in front of us. This church is not over. It's not canceled. It's not done with. God has a good plan for us here in China. Amen. He's got a good plan for you. It, the, your good days aren't over. Your dreams aren't over. Your hopes aren't over. Your your uh, uh, goals can still be achieved. Your dreams can still be achieved. Come on, today is a day for resurrection. Today is a day for freedom. Today is a day that the Lord wants to come and say, I've got good news for you. I've been proclaimed liberty to the captives, and I'm proclaiming recovering of sight to the blind today. If you've been blinded by the devil today, just receive freedom to remove those blinds in Jesus' name. If you feel oppressed today. Today, just remove that oppression from the devil, from the world. In the name of Jesus, I proclaim the anointing over your body right now, over your mind right now, over your spirit, right? Come on, someone raise up your hand today. You need this. I needed this yesterday. I was ready to pack my bags yesterday and get out of here. I was so fed up. I was so tired, but I started to proclaim the word of God. And he gave me this word that where the sun sets, who the sun sets free is free indeed. He gave me the word and reminded me that the Holy Spirit is in me and manifests freedom in me. And I'm just re revitalized and re-encouraged and reinvigorated today in the name of Jesus. And he wants to do the same for all of us. And he's going to see us through. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Amen. In Jesus name, we're going to continue on. And I'd like to read for us here as we come to a close quick service today, just a quick encouraging word. This is uh, Luke 1, 36 through 37, New Living Translation. And this is the angel Gabriel that we're getting close to the Christmas season. Praise God. We're going to celebrate Christmas, whether we're inside or at a restaurant together. We're going to have Christmas in our hearts because this is the season of the birth of hope. Amen. And I love this passage here. Normally, we focus on the, the uh, proclamation of Jesus's birth, but I'd like to take a look here at Elizabeth because this just jumped off the page at me, and the angel speaking to Mary, and he says, what's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month, for the word of God will never fail. Luke 1, 36 through 37, come on today. What has people, what have, what have people used to say about you? What did the, what was the reputation you used to have? What was the word that people used to speak over you? Maybe it wasn't good. Maybe it wasn't encouraging. Maybe it wasn't something that you, you liked. Maybe you hoped that, you know, I don't want to be that person anymore. Well, today is a day for resurrection. Today is a day for freedom. Today is a day for a new word. Today is a day for a new anointing, fresh anointing. People used to say of Elizabeth, she's barren. She'll never have kids. There's nothing going to come from her. But the, the, the Holy Spirit came upon her and the 
prophecy came over her from her husband, uh, Zach, Zachariah, and he was blessed, and she was blessed, and she she conceived a son, and that son became John the Baptist, the, the last and greatest prophet that came before the, 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 the ministry of Jesus. So I want to say to you today, what, what did people used to say about you that they're not saying that anymore? What did people, what was the reputation you had? Well, that's not your reputation anymore. Come on, you're a child of God. You're a son. You're a daughter of the King of Heaven. Your God wants to birth something on the inside of you today. He wants to birth new hope on the inside of you today. He wants to birth a new dream on the inside of you today. She's she's she was six months. She'd already this she, the dream was maturing on the inside of her. Well, God today is maturing the dream on the inside of you. He's maturing freedom on the inside of you. He's maturing a new direction and a new plan and a new hope and a new day on the inside of you today. Come on, let's focus. We're going to focus later on in December. We'll focus on Mary and the birth of Jesus. But today on December 4th, we're going to focus on Elizabeth and see that, yeah, maybe we can identify with a, a Elizabeth. Maybe we can identify that she was barren, but she's pregnant. Maybe you felt barren, but now you're pregnant on the inside. This is not a trans message, but this is a message of hope for all of us today that God wants to birth something on the inside of you today and, and change your mind, change your perspective, change your attitude, see his power come into and work in you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. So as we close, I'm going to give us some encouraging words, and then we're going to pray for China. Amen. But today I want you to choose abundant life. Make a choice today. Even declare it out of your mouth today. On December 4th, 2022, as I go into this new season, I choose abundant life in the name of Jesus. I declare over you today that you have his life, you have his nature, and you have his ability. You're not born of the world. You're born of the Holy Ghost. You're born of the grace of Jesus. You're a new creation today. You've got his life, his nature, and his ability. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. A few weeks ago, a couple months ago, I spoke on this in our Philippians series, but you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. The Bible says that all grace abounds towards you and every favor and every earthly blessing that you would have all sufficiency for all things and abound to every good work. Come on, no matter what situation you're in, all grace abounds towards you in every situation in the name of Jesus. Come on, I declare over you today that you shall declare the works of God, that you shall live and not die and declare the work of the Lord. You will declare the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. You shall live, choose life today in Jesus' name. A few more. You today are the head and not the tail. Come on, you need to declare the blessings of Abraham from Deuteronomy 28, that, that you are blessed going in, blessed going out, blessed in the country, blessed in the city, whatever you put your hands to, prospers and succeeds, that the windows of heaven are open unto you, pouring out a blessing that you cannot contain that the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun, that you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, that as he is, so are you today, that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to, you, to his purposes. You are called according to his purpose today in the name of Jesus. Come on, I hope that you can raise up your hands today. I hope that, in fact, I even encourage you to stand up right now. I encourage you to stand up. In fact, I will too. Amen. I hope that you can still see me. Come on, we're going to stand up and we're, we're going to declare together that we're children of the Most High God. You can't really see me that well, so I'll sit back down, but I hope that you'll stand up. Amen. But you are a child of the Most High God, that today freedom is residing on the inside of you, expressing itself in you, that you have the 
Jesus Christ, the hope of glory on the inside of you today, that justice will come to your door today, that righteousness will come to your door today, that peace will come to your door today as you proclaim the word of God and as you receive it into your heart, into your life. I may have to go out and get tested again today. I don't know, but I'm going to listen to some worship music. I'm going to listen to my pastor at home preach a sermon. I'll have a good attitude today. I won't like it, but I'll have a good attitude about it. You can do both at the same time. Amen. So I'm going to close our service today, and I'm going to give us this scripture as we pray over China today. And I'd like to open it up. If you would like to pray for the church or pray for China today, 